Hello, those of you who are here. <laughs> and if you guys have trouble logging on, I think they changed the settings through uh, Zoom for the college. I put that over there for a reason. Hi, Professor. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well. I'm going well. nuts. I'm going nuts being incarcerated, Professor. <laughs> Did you ever hear back from the test you took? Not yet. I'm. Uh, this is going to be week five. Tomorrow's oh. going to be week five. So I'm expecting results tomorrow. If not, definitely by next Friday. Pray for me, Professor. Pray. All right. Okay. I hope you get it. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, actually. I'm not going crazy as I thought. I have a nice yard to play in. And nice. Me and my wife in our small house. It's a small house, but it's just the two of us. So I. I yeah. I, I drive her crazy, you know, until it started raining, I was doing all my meetings on the porch every day. So she didn't even have to deal with me. I've been very busy too. I got a, I got a new gig with InnoCaption. So I'm captioning um, statewide for the hard of hearing. So that's pretty wow. neat. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So you're probably busier than before. You know what? Yes. Because everybody's making appointments and ordering food. So I'm like, uh, like I'm like an operator stuck nice. to my chair. So it's pretty nice. cool. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's keeping me busy. Busy is nice. Better than yes. not. I mean, I guess, I guess <laughs> I, I, it's just kind of weird. Not, I mean, the, we're not coming back. Summer I is know. remote. I, I, our college hasn't officially made summer remote, but people are talking about fall being remote too. I'm like, no, no, no please. Oh, really? No. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, the nice thing is, is that the district I work for has plenty of money. So everybody's still in paid status. Everybody's yeah. working from home. So nobody lost their job. Even the hourlies that were under contract for the semester mm -hmm. are getting paid, mm -hmm. even if they're not working. It's like, look, we made this deal with you. We'll pay you through the end of your contract. So. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a huge, huge relief. Yeah. But I'm, I'm hoping that, I don't know. I'm not going to hold my breath that I'll be back this summer. I'm hoping for sure for the fall. But mm -hmm. My faculty are gearing up to to do remote for the summer. Um, a few of them are like, you know, if we have to be remote, we're just going to cancel because we don't want to. We don't like doing labs remotely. Um, and the chemistry department surprised me. They're like, you know what? We're just going to figure out a way to do this. So, yeah. gonna make kits, get boxes of stuff, and ship them to students and do something. I'm like, wow, go ahead, you guys. You guys are rocking to do that. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> wow. Wow. I, I just want to get back to normal and who knows how long that's going to take. Yeah, I, I have no idea the new normal, what the new normal is going to be, but we yeah. had plans to travel. My nephew was going to get married in Wisconsin in July. No, mm -hmm. June. He was going to get married June 6th. And then he's like, hey, Uncle Rich, um, would you be able to come in July? I'm like, yeah, no problem. And then he's like, how about August? I'm like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> So, yeah. The nice thing yeah. about Southwest is you could just reschedule so we didn't lose any money on any of the flights or right, right. Airbnbs right. and they all refunded. And I had a conference I had to cancel and all that got refunded. So I, I'm not out any money, but I just, a lot of people who had things planned are not planning them. And so you think about the trickle down of how that'll impact the economy. I don't, I don't know. Maybe yeah. people will be gun shy. I, I think twice about flying for a for a while yeah yeah i was supposed to be in japan right now honestly and mm -hmm. um we've uh we knew that was going to be canceled since like january wow my mm -hmm. my uh, nephew's in japan he was gonna come back 
And he's like, no, I can't. The company he was doing some English teaching for said, can you stay? He does like IT and English teaching and stuff. And because if he would have come back from Japan, he would have had to been in quarantine at LAX. He's like, ugh, who wants that? I know. And our, our borders are closed, right? Um, no, nah, I don't think they're closed completely. I think if you're a U.S. citizen, you can come back in. But even if you come from certain countries, there was some quarantine business going on. So it's okay. Just, but I mean, people are traveling. One of the other deans has got a cabin in Wisconsin. So he, he lives in an apartment here. He's like, I'm not hanging around all these people. I'm going to Wisconsin. So he's been, I mean, we're working remotely. Every meeting I have is a Zoom meeting. So I mean, I go into campus every couple of days just to get the mail and do some things, but none of us are required to be on campus. So it's, if he can work from Wisconsin, mm -hmm. more power to him. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of interesting to say the least, but teaching from Zoom, my faculty are learning how to do that. They're, I've got some faculty who I, I wouldn't call old, let me say I'll call them old school. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, uh, they're learning it. Right, they're doing what they can in in order to to get things get things done. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. give them credit for all that all that stuff they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, this is all new to us. The nice thing about this course is that Barbara Gonzalez, who set the course up, taught it online for the last couple of years. So all the information she gave me, the titanium webpage and everything was kind of really set up for being an online course. Oh, okay. But, um, but still, I mean, at, at Fullerton, the, the, the board decided to give all the faculty a $1,500 bonus because of all the crap they had to do and all the adjuncts are getting like $300 per class. So, I mean, they're doing what they can to offset because I've heard horror stories about how much work faculty have to put in just to, just to begin to get their course to, to work remotely. Yeah. Because if you didn't do anything, right? If, I mean, normally when I would teach, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the computer. I would have everything. <laughs> I mean, I would type my quizzes exams, but I'm a hard copy kind of person. And, and so mm -hmm. it would, if I wasn't using someone else's material, it would be a lot of work. And, and yeah. I'll do it. They're doing it. I, like I said, I give them credit for all the stuff they're doing. And as students too, I, I think for the most part, I mean, even in this class, I think a lot of the students have stuck it out. I, I haven't heard from anybody. One or two students um, dropped, I think, just because they had to go back home and they couldn't stick around and they didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I do it, I did, I did hear, I'm gonna wait till everyone gets here or till more people get here, but I did hear from the, the chemistry department head and I think faculty senate voted to um, extend the credit no credit option for students all the way up to into june 5th or something so if a student decides you know what i don't like the grade i got i want to go credit no credit um, you can switch any time up until then oh that's well that's a good option yeah well that, just because the faculty senate approves it it still has to go through uh the official university to get approved but at least i can let the students know that that's more than likely going to be an option yeah I think that's for all departments because our Kines professors were telling us the same thing that they're right. Yeah, the faculty senate made that vote, so they voted to make it happen, gotcha. but it still has to get approved by the university. And typically, with things like this, they will. Um, I think just because they want to help you guys out, but um, I don't know. I don't really see anyone doing that tragically because I think, I mean, I guess for a class like this that you're not using it for a grade, you're just using it to get into another course and you don't want it to affect your GPA, but some of you are doing really, really well. I would imagine you'd want the, the good grade on the GPA, but I think C minus and above will count as a passing grade. So that's really not that hard in this class. Mm -hmm. At least I don't think it's that hard. Maybe I'm, I don't know. C did you get a haircut, professor? Not only did I get a haircut, I did it myself. Nice, baby. <laughs> Remember, was that you that was telling me? Who was it was telling me that? The, you did pretty good, Professor. What's that? <laughs> you look pretty it, good. Yeah, well, the sides are kind of shaky because I did, I did uh, five ace on the top with the with the just the buzzer, right? And then I did eighth inch on the sides, and I just went straight up. I didn't try to feather or anything. <laughs> But here on the back, I just kind of did it for by sight. I didn't do the whole back, and my wife's like, "What happened to your head? You gotta let me fix that." Because apparently, right here and right here, it's not tethered in very well. Like, I never see the back of my head. I don't care. I'm not going anywhere for a while. So, yeah, 
it, it, it was me who asked you if you got it cut. I think I asked you if your wife cuts your hair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you said I just like your dad. He cuts his own hair. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I'm like that. Uh, okay, it looks like 38 people are here. Um, so none of you had trouble logging in. It, I got an email that said Zoom for the university was changing and that they were going to require some kind of authentication. I'm like, oh boy, I hope everybody gets in. I don't see, no one emailed me and said they had any issues. Let me just, Professor I, is, uh, sorry, is Raylene in? Can you see that? Raylene in, let me check. Um, let me go to my full screen here. Let me check manage participants. Andrew, Raylene. Um, you know, I don't see her in yet. Nope. Okay. Okay, I'll wait. I've updated my Zoom and everything, and I haven't been required to put in a password yet or anything. So. Okay, well, they yeah, keep they telling end. me that that's the way it's going to be, and then other people just like, eh, whatever, I'm in. So I'm like, okay. All right. All right. Kate, Alec, Alex, Joanna, Atria, Brennan, Brian, Cedar. Chris, Cindy, Daniela, Dan. What it did say is it automatically muted everybody when you came in. And um, mm -hmm. so if you need to talk, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Um, it looks like a lot of people are here. Raul, what are you doing? Are you playing ball anywhere? Or are you just kind of hanging out? Right now, I've just been hanging out and working out. So. So you're huge now, right? You gained a lot of muscle? Yeah, pretty much. The off-season grind, you know? Well, I, I, I got to be honest. Since I've been home, I've been – because I sit a lot at my desk, and now I can, I can get up, I can walk around, I can go for a walk or a run in the middle of the day. I've actually been, <laughs> been losing weight. With, I'm like, this is working out for me. I'm yeah, like, I know. Same here, same here. Like, I have way more time to work out, so I've been, like, nonstop working out. So getting ready yeah. to and then summer, you're going home and just whatever. Summer, we have uh, the summer. Summer, uh, it's like uh, we have pra we have practices, and then I don't. I'm not sure if we're going to travel. Probably not. But are you going to be allowed to practice? You think because we had we had a summer research experience that our students were supposed to come to at Cal State, and all that stuff got canceled. Are they going to have have sports during the summer for you guys? I'm not sure. Coach, uh, I asked him about it, and he just said that he's going to have to talk to Diedrich about right. it, but, but he's not sure yet. Oh, uh, man. So, I don't know. He says that we might just go jump into the next season, like no preseason or anything. Perla, you don't have your camera on. I can't see if you're wearing those nice earrings. <laughs> Are you wearing your love earrings, Perla? No, I don't have them on right now. Oh. Are you dressing up or are you just like living in your pajamas and, and, and sweatshirts and stuff? <laughs> oh, look, there you are. You're all dressed up. You're <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> oh, good. I just miss seeing you guys. Nobody turns their cameras on. Ritvige is probably gaming. Are you gaming, Ritvige? Yes, I am. <laughs> what are you playing? Rainbow Six Siege. What are you playing? Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, Rainbow. Did you read any of the Rainbow Six books? Uh, not really, no. No, that would involve reading. That was what I did. I read the <laughs> Probably read them on a, on a beach somewhere. Ramon, are you in bed again? <laughs> like last time? I literally just walked out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was like, you know what, I'm gonna turn on the camera when I'm in the office. Oh right? nice. In my bed. <laughs> That's good. Sound like I'm being productive. Very well, you know, it 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 it's a thing. It's a thing to feel somewhat productive. <laughs> I know that um it's really odd for me. I think it kind of makes me wonder, don't tell my boss this, but it kind of makes me wonder how much they really need me at my job when I think about you know, okay, I sign a few papers, then I do some things, then I sign some more, and I go to these meetings. It's like, wow, is that really all I do in a day? No, I do a lot more. My day, I'm super valuable to them. Super valuable. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Rosa, are you and Sarah hanging out? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, we're in the same room, aren't you? No, 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 no. <laughs> How did you get that feedback if you weren't? We're on FaceTime. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, you know, that's fine. That's fine. I get it. No, that's good. I'm glad you guys are hanging out and working together. And <laughs> The only way we can hang out. That's all right. That's all right. Do you guys live anywhere near each other? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, man. He's like 30 minutes away from me. Oh, that is bad. That's pretty far. <laughs> yeah. You guys all had to leave, right? Or can any, did all you guys have to leave campus if you were living on campus? Nope. I'm here. Who's here? I can't see who said that. That is me. I am Kay. Ah, Kay. Okay. Yeah. I see now you're, uh, when you talk, the yellow box around your picture or, or avatar highlights. Who haven't I picked on for a while? Estrella, how are you doing? Estrella. I'm doing good. Yeah. What are you doing? Nothing. No? What other classes are you taking? Oh, bio, HCOM, history, and dance. Oh, how's that dance class going? I just have to perform, like, I have to record a solo that, and then write a paper. That's it. Really? Yeah. I should try that. That might be... <laughs> I'm going to do my final exam in chem chemistry via interpretive dance. How do you like that? <laughs> Sounds that like works, fun. That works for everybody. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see, who haven't I? Uh, Jaime, what are you doing? What? What are you doing these days? I'm just at home. Yeah, just keeping busy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sammy, how you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? <laughs> you? You didn't even practice, try it again. How you doing, Sammy? I'm doing good. <laughs> I I do it. I'm actually doing extremely well. Extremely I mean, well. I've been playing badminton with my mom. You have? Yes. And who's, who typically wins? Me, of course. You know, you got to be nice to your mom and let her win every now and then. <laughs> she did that for you all the years you were growing up. She let you win. So now is your chance to pay it back and let her win every now and then. Okay, sure. <laughs> all right. So um, before I start new-ish kind of stuff, do any of you have any questions about um, anything we've been working on? And you can, um, if you raise your hand in the screen, I'll see you if you have your camera on. If you don't, you're gonna have to do the raise hand thing through the, part, through the chat box. Um, so is it a quiz or a test today? It is a quiz today. Quiz, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Cindy, you have a question. What's up? Yeah, I had just a uh, quick question for STP, standard temperature and pressure. Right. In, in our notes, I noticed we had temperature at 25 degrees Celsius. That was a mistake. I screwed okay. up. It's zero. So, okay. Yeah. I got, I got confused between thermodynamic standard temperature, which is 25, and gas law standard temperature. So it is, in fact, zero degrees Celsius. Okay. Thank you. Plus on the quiz, remember, you can use whatever you want. I mean, I'm not going to, if you use a book, if you use the internet, right, it's not designed for you to look up the answers, but if you need to look up a number or something, how am I going to know, right? So I get it. Any other questions? Uh, Diane, was that you that just asked that question? No, Cindy had a question. Diane, what's on your mind? Um, I had a question about one of the things on the study guide. Well, first you have to tell me who the pooch is. Is that your dog? Yeah, that's my dog. <laughs> His name, her name. Her name is Roxy. Roxy. What kind of dog is that? Um, she's a boxer mix. We got her from the shelter, so we don't know what she's mixed with. She looks really happy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's your question? Um, it was the one that asked about, it says, determine the relationship between reactants and components in a chemical reaction from a balanced chemical equation. What's oh, that so like? Go ahead. It's just like, what does that mean? I didn't, I just. It's basically confused. saying that when you have a balanced equation, um, the numbers in front of the, of the, of the um, components. So let's say you had uh, CH4 plus O2 goes to CO2 and um, H2O. 
And when you balanced it, you had a one in front of the CH4 and a five in front of the O2. It would basically, it's basically asking you, do you understand that that one to five means a one to five mole ratio between those components? So it's really, it's really a very basic statement of your understanding of what the numbers in a balanced equation mean. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Uh, anyone else? Questions? Trying to see if there's any other hands being raised. Professor, is yep. the quiz available to uh, print out yet? Um, not yet. Nope. Okay. It's there. I'll, I'll let you guys have it like five minutes before the official time gets going. Okay. Um, and then I had some questions about that as well. So somebody asked me, hey, Dr. Hartman, um, I don't have a printer or a scanner or any of those things. How can I do this? Can I just write out my answers on a piece of paper and then use the scanning app you told us to download or take a picture? Absolutely. So if you want to just um, pull up the screen, pull up the Word document on the screen, and then just write your answers on a piece of paper for each ant for each question, and then send that to me as a PDF or um, a picture. That's totally fine. So whatever works for you guys to get your answers back to me. Somebody also said, um, you know what? If I'm answering it via um, typing on the computer, it's going to be hard for me to show work. Uh, is that okay? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. But if you don't show work, I can't give you partial credit. So the other option might be to just answer on a separate sheet of paper, show your work, and then then take a picture of that and send it back to me. That might be what works best for everybody. Um, it's up to you, right? If you don't want partial credit, then you know, don't worry about it. It's it's um, like half multiple choice and half um, short answer and calculations and stuff. I I tried not to make it super hard. So hopefully if you've been practicing, you should be able to do, do it all okay. Any other questions? Yeah. So you will send us an email, right? Um, actually, no, what I'm gonna do is it's, it's already posted on Titanium. It's just hidden from view. So when I get ready, I'm just gonna make it, make it visible and you'll be able to see it. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, so you, you'll wanna be logged on to your, um, your portal, the Titanium for this portal for this class. Um, where I always go to find things, and then um, it will be available there shortly. The, the shorter answer questions will be kind of similar to what we've been doing on our homework? Yep, absolutely. Very similar to what you've been doing on your homework. Any other questions? Are you taking points off if we're late turning it in? If you're like five hours late and you don't contact me, I might. <laughs> If, if you're, you know, I'm going to stay online until, until the, the quiz would normally end, right? And so at that point, I'll, I'll just log off. If you have any questions, you would have to like email me or text me because you all have my cell number. And then um, if something happens and you're unable to get it to me within like 15 or 20 minutes after the ending time, just text me and say, hey, I'm having issues with this and, and we'll figure out a way to get it to me. Even if you have to text it to me, that's fine too. I don't really have an issue with that. Um, with all of the electronic tools we have available, I would, I would imagine that you, you should um, be able to get it to me. Um, my goal is not to ding you for that. And so I would hope if you're, if you're experiencing technical difficulties, um, you'd let me know ASAP and, and then we'll work with that. Okay. Brian, you're like fading in and out. I see you for a second and then I see, I don't know, some building behind you. I can't afford a good green screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even afford a green screen. <laughs> wow. Doesn't Zoom like make, let you make a virtual background automatically? Yeah, it is. It's like, but if I, but like my lighting is just really awful in my room. Oh. So if I turn off my lamp, all you can see is the background. Oh, well you look, you look pretty ghoulish. I mean, I don't mind that. It looks kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, people are going to be paying attention to that instead of you know, what you have to tell us. So. Right. Okay. I got issued a uh, library from the, not library, I got issued a laptop from the school library and I can, I have to pick it up tomorrow, but like you should be able to start like seeing my face. Like, Yay! Soon. Awesome. And honestly, guys, I harass you about not turning your cameras on, but look, I don't really care. It's just, it's just weird for me. I miss seeing you all in class and I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm only talking to the people who show the cameras on, and I, that's why I purposely tried to talk to some of the rest of you today personally, just because um, I don't want it to seem like I'm playing favorites here, but it's hard not to when I can see your faces. Um, 
And like I said, I can only see, so if you have your camera on, you're on my main screen when I look at the gallery view. Um, if you don't have your camera on, um, you're on the second screen, which I typically don't go to unless I, I need to go to that screen. So it's always useful to have that on. All right. Any other hey, professor? Tools? Yep. How long, how long do we have on uh, on the quiz? Well, um, officially you have like an hour and fifteen minutes, so I'll I'll open it up right around seven thirty, and you should try to turn it in by by seven forty five at the latest. Right. And I realize normally I'd only give you an hour for the quiz, but I know that this is the first time we're doing this whole thing, so I expect some technology issues. Although I expect them more on my end than yours, simply because you guys are way more tech savvy than I am. So. Um, you'll have at least an hour, potentially like an hour and 15 minutes at the least. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. Anyone else? Any other questions about stuff we've been working on? I have a question. All right. Um, on the quiz three study guide thing, mm -hmm. there's one that says classify reactions as synthesis, decomposition, single replacement or double replacement. Can you go over that? Sure. Um, so do you remember, um, I tried to pull up that PowerPoint, but basically a single replacement, like a synthesis, a synthesis reaction would, where you'd have something like A plus B goes to C, like hydrogen gas, H2 plus oxygen gas, O2 goes to H2O. Let me turn my iPad on and I can show you guys this. All right. No, I don't need you, Siri. Go away. Professor, what time are we going to be starting the, uh, the quiz? We are going to start at 7.30. So if you need to check out and play video games for a while. Oh, no. no. 7.30 or 6.30? Yeah. I'm sorry, 6.30. We're going to start oh, at 6.30. I'm sorry. 7.30 Mountain Time. <laughs> right? Right? Is that, did I do that right? Is that correct? 7.30 Mountain Time is 6.30 Pacific Time? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> what is Mountain Time? Mountain it's like Denver. Denver. It's like Denver. Yeah. Central, Mountain, Eastern, Pacific. I think we have four time zones in the U.S. Is that correct? 42, everybody's here. That's amazing. I can't believe you guys are all sticking with this. You must, you must, um, I don't know. Makes me happy. Um, share screen, share screen. All right, here we go. It's probably going to do the same thing at every time it does. It's going to tell me I need to update my iPad, but we're not concerned about that. All right, so let me turn this pen on. Let's go to notability. Let's go to, oh my, how do I do a new one? Help me out here, people. I don't know, recent notes, all notes. There we go. All right, I figured it out. Look at that. My, and I'm amazing. I made my, get out of here. All right. Okay. So, um, okay. They just, I'm seeing things on my screen that you're probably not seeing. So all you see right now is my iPad, right? So a synthesis reaction, this should be finer than that. A synthesis reaction. Okay. Oh boy. All right. Synthesis would be something like this. H2 plus O2 goes to H2O. And of course you'd want to balance it. I, I, all right, so if you wanted to balance it, you'd have to have a two here and a two here, right? Four, four. That would be an example of a synthesis, a simple synthesis, which, um, which in the notes, when we took the notes, that was symbolized by A plus B goes to AB. Okay, um, there are other kinds of synthesis reactions where you make more complicated things. Um, but generically speaking, a synthesis reaction is where you're taking simple pieces and putting together to make something more complicated. All right. Um, the other kind that we talked about was a single replacement. Where you have one element replacing a like element in a similar compound. So for instance, we might have something like uh, sodium solid plus AgCl 
right? And this is only slightly soluble. I know the solubility guidelines say that AGCl is not soluble. It's, it's soluble in hot water. So let's pretend we're in hot water, right? So um, this particular reaction, well, Daniela, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. What do you expect this is gonna make? If it's a, if it's a single replacement reaction, what do you expect to get? Mm. <laughs> no? Anyone wanna jump in? If this is called sodium and this is called you're, silver. You're replacing one thing. And right. uh, silver and sodium are both metals, so it would become it would be. uh, silver and uh, sodium chloride. Yeah, there you go. Silver solid plus NaCl. So what it's, it's basically like replacing like. So in this case, you have to realize, okay, sodium is a metal, silver is a metal. Um, this guy is only going to replace this. So you wouldn't. You wouldn't do this reaction, so let me pick a, uh, another color. So this reaction doesn't happen because sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal, because if that happened, you'd end up with AgNa and Cl, right? In this case, it would have to be Cl2 because that's the form of the free element, but that doesn't happen, right? No, no, that doesn't happen, okay? So a single replacement, what you want to think is like replaces like. So a metal replaces a metal. We could also, under the single replacement, using the same kind of concept, we could use something like this, Br2 plus AgCl. In that case, this is a non-metal. This is a non-metal. It would replace the non-metal if, in fact, it was going to go, right? So I'm not going to ask you necessarily predict these because these are a little more complicated and we haven't talked much about that. But if it was gonna, then you would get AGBR plus Cl2. And again, this is a little bit on the tricky side because you have to know that it's making a free element and chlorine is Cl2. Remember there are seven of those guys. Yeah. Um, fluorine, chlorine, bromide, iodine, um, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen all occur as pairs um, when they're individuals. Okay, um, let's go. Okay. So I have a question. Yep. So from the single replacement reaction, so every time- Oh, well, well, stop for a second, Min Sung. Okay. Why is your camera not on? Is your room a mess again? No, I haven't took a shower yet. Oh, I don't oh, up. so you look really messed up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Okay, you don't have to have your camera on. <laughs> so, like, uh, for single replacement, so if one element made like another compound, you always like change their position. Yep. If it happens, right? And we haven't talked about we haven't talked about the rules for governing these reactions, right? All I've asked you at this point is to recognize when they happen. They're there are reasons why sodium would replace silver or silver replace sodium. You don't know those reasons yet, and so I'm not going to ask you about them. But yes, a metal will always replace a metal. A non-metal will always replace a non-metal. And these reactions are always going to happen with ionic substances. All right. So we would not have, a, we would not have an example with a covalent substance trying to replace because it doesn't happen. So single replacement always involve ionic at least one ionic compound. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, next one was, um, well, what was the next one, Danielle? You got the list in front of you. So you said single replacement, double synthesis. Oh, decomposition. We missed decomposition, yeah. right? So we just flat out skipped that one. So a decomposition is just the opposite decompositioning, decomposition is just the opposite, right? So this is where you would take something that's more complicated and break it down into simpler things, all right? And so let's write the generic form for that first. That would be something like AB goes to A plus B, right? 
In the simplest form, these are both elements, right? So a simple example would just be like the, the opposite of the one we just did a minute ago. H2O breaks apart into H2 O2. plus O2, right? And so we can do that. If you pass electricity through water, it's called electrolysis, and you can break water into hydrogen and oxygen, right? And that's one way to get hydrogen gas. So if you drive a hydrogen fuel cell car and you need hydrogen gas, that's probably the most economical way to make hydrogen is to just split water apart and then you have the oxygen as a byproduct and you can use that as well right this isn't balanced all right keep that in mind i haven't balanced it but a decomposition breaks something complex into something simple but it can also break complicated things into less complicated things so for instance this stuff nahco3 all right so here's a freebie exam review question what's the name of this stuff anyone you can type sodium it in the carbonate. chat if you want or you can just say it sodium carbonate close close if it was na2co3 it would be sodium carbonate but it's got this little guy right here so it's not... hydrogen carbonate. Yep, that's one name. What's the other name? Sodium bicarbonate. Oh, who said that? Was that you, Rudvij? Yes, it was. Oh, he pulled something right out. Are you still playing the game, man, doing this, or are you just doing this? No, I'm not playing a game anymore. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe you had some serious skills going on there. Sodium bicarbonate. Anyone recognize sodium bicarbonate? as something you might use on a regular basis? Baking soda. Yep, that's baking soda. And who said baking soda, Kay? That would be me, yes. What do you use baking soda for? Cleaning your pools. Okay, that's one of the things you might use it for. What about that? <laughs> What's the purpose of baking soda when you use it in a baked good? Anybody know? It makes it rise. Yeah, it's a leavening agent, right? So if you were to take baking soda and heat it, that's what this little triangle means, it has to make something that causes that thing to rise, which in this case is CO2. It also makes H2O, and it also makes Na2CO2 three right i don't expect you to know that but if i gave you an expression like that you could look at it and you could say hey i got one thing that's breaking apart into three things that's also a decomposition reaction something is decomposing it's breaking apart into stuff right i'm not swapping things around i'm not replacing something i'm just breaking it apart right and that it doesn't quite fit this pattern. A plus B goes to AB. This looks like ABC goes to A plus B plus C. But even that's kind of disingenuous, right? Because in this case, A really does look like it's hydrogen and B really does look like it's oxygen. In this case, there's really no ABC. It's one complicated thing breaks apart into three simpler things. So these are both examples of decomposition reactions. And back here under synthesis, you can also have more complicated examples of synthesis where you take two compounds and put them together to make a more complicated compound. Like if you did this one in reverse, you could take carbon dioxide, water, and sodium carbonate, you can take these guys, put them together, and make sodium bicarbonate. That reaction can be reversed. It's not easy to reverse it, but it can. All right. And then the final one, which we had was a double replacement or ionic, right? And so a double replacement, well, sounds a lot like single. So if single replacement was A plus AB, A plus BC goes to AC plus B, then this is gonna look something like AB plus CD goes to now keep in mind, these guys are both the first pieces, right? And so if, if we were writing ionic compounds, 
right? The first thing we write is always the metal. The second thing we write is always the non-metal, right? So there's a reason why we write formulas the way we do, and, and there's a reason why things swap the way they do. So A and C are gonna trade places. So we would end up with A, D, we would run it, and my computer is not happy. We would end up with A, D plus C, B, all right? You could also write CB plus AD. Does it matter which one of those you write first? No. However, you don't want to write something like this. You don't want to write BA plus BC. Even though you got the two elements together, you put the non-metal first and then the metal, which is something we wouldn't do, right? And so as an example of something that, that um, undergoes a, a double replacement reaction, we might have something like All right, and if you remember from last time we talked about solubility rules, anytime something has a nitrate attached to it, it's soluble. And these are also called ionic reactions because they must take place where? Where do they have to take place? In what? Anyone? Water. Water or in solution, right? They have to take place in solution, right? And the reason, again, remember last time, is when you put them in water, they break apart and then the ions can trade places, okay? So lead nitrate, right? And then actually, let's think about this for a minute. Remember last time we talked about the driving force of this reaction? The driving force is to form something that's insoluble, right? Something that forms a precipitate. So this is soluble. If I want this reaction to proceed, right? I can never make a nitrate insoluble. So nitrate's always gonna be insoluble. Maybe I can get this lead to be insoluble if I combined it with something else. You remember the solubility guidelines, some of the things that were insoluble? Well, you'll practice with them, but eventually you'll realize that, you know, if I combined lead with chloride, I mentioned it earlier, but I said we used hot water, but lead chloride is not soluble. So if I combine this with NaCl, aqueous, right? They're both aqueous on the left. Then um, some place trading happens. Lead and sodium trade places. Right? They only trade places if the thing I form over here is insoluble. So if I trade places, I'm going to make PbCl2, right? And I know lead is plus two because there's two nitrates, which are each minus one. So many things to remember, oh my gosh. So this is PBCL2, and what's the other product? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Uh, sodium. Oh. Sodium, yep, I'll agree with you, sodium something. Nitrate. Sodium nitrate, NaNO3, right? And then of course we'd have to balance it, so, um, there's two nitrates here, so there'd have to be a two in front of this. I didn't leave myself enough room. Two sodium, so it has to be a two in front of this. So now I have two chlorides, two chlorides, two sodiums, two sodiums, one lead, one lead, two nitrates, two nitrates. So it's balanced. So this, this thing right here is an example of a, an ionic or a double, a double replacement reaction. Okay, does that make sense, Daniela? Yes, thank you. Okay, well, we might as well carry on a little bit because this is related. This is then related to, um, I wonder if it's going to let me scroll up this page a little bit. No, nope, it doesn't like that. I wanted to write a little more at the bottom of this. Let, let me do it this way. Ah, it gives me a little more room this way. So this guy here, right, can be broken apart, right? So this is the overall chemical equation. So that's the chemical equation. But remember last time we talked about a couple of other equations. We talked about the ionic equation and also the net ionic equation. All right. So in this particular case, I'm not showing any ions here. So this is not an ionic equation. That's just the overall chemical equation, right? The ionic equation would, would ask you to break everything apart 
that can be, that's a solid by, oh man, what the heck just happened there? That's a solid, by the way. Break apart everything that can be into the ions that make it up. So in this case, um, this guy, I'm trying to pick a color that's different, uh, about green. This guy is aqueous, so he can break apart into pieces. This guy is aqueous, so he can break apart into pieces. This guy's solid, can't break apart. Um, sodium nitrate, I failed to write it in there, but that's a nitrate, that's soluble, so that can break apart into pieces. So we would write for the ionic equation, Pb plus two aqueous plus two NO3 minus one aqueous, right? So that's what happens to this guy, plus two Na plus aqueous plus two Cl minus aqueous. Uh, how do I get rid of this? No, it's not gonna like me do that. Still trying to learn how to use this, all right? Two Cl minus, this is an AQ right next to it, but I've run out of room to write. That takes care of everything on the left. If I go to the right, what about this guy, PbCl2? Do I break that apart into pieces? Yes or no? No. Nope. Why not, Minsung? Because it's solid. 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 It's not dissolved, right? It's not in solution. It's down at the bottom of your container. So I would just leave that as PbCl2. And then the NaNO3 is aqueous. And there's two of them. So plus two. This is solid, by the way. Plus two Na plus aqueous plus two NO3 minus aqueous. Right? Remember this two that's in front of these guys goes with the whole thing. So there's two sodiums and two chlorides. So we just wrote the ionic equation. All right. And then the net ionic would ask us to do what? It says cancel out everything that's the same on both sides. All right. So I got a lead plus two over here. Do I have a lead plus two on the right? Yes or no? Yes. No, no, no. Well, I've got lead, but is it by itself or is it part of a compound? Part of a compound. Part of a compound, so I can't cancel it out. I've got two nitrates on the left. Do I have any nitrates on the right? Yep, I got two nitrates over here, so I can cancel those guys out. I've got two sodium pluses on the left, two sodium pluses on the right, I can cancel those out. I've got two chlorides here, but the chlorine is not separated here. So I canceled out everything I could. So now to write the net ionic equation, I just write down everything that I didn't cancel out. So I have PBC, excuse me, I have, come out, go, I got, Pb plus two aqueous plus, not, I didn't cancel out, plus two Cl minus aqueous produces PbCl2 solid. That's the net ionic equation. So when you're doing expressions like this, Writing the overall ionic is pretty straightforward. Uh, oh, excuse me, the overall chemical equation is pretty straightforward. Breaking it apart into the ions that make it up can be a little bit challenging, all right? Especially because you gotta watch out. This two means I get two of these nitrates, right? What's the charge on lead? What's the charge on nitrate? What's the charge on sodium? What's the charge on chlorine? So you gotta remember a few things and then Picking the same things out on both sides and canceling them out, all right, leaves you with the net ionic equation. And the reason we care about the net ionic equation is because that's really what's driving this reaction. These guys, the ones I crossed out, do you remember what those are called, anybody? They watch the reaction, remember what spectators. they are? Spectators. Yeah, these are called spectator ions. They just kind of watch the reaction. And so when the reaction's done, they're just swimming around in solution. They didn't do anything, right? When I, when I finish the reaction, the lead chloride is a precipitate at the bottom of the container. These guys are swimming around in solution. If I evaporate the solution at the end, this stuff will come out, but otherwise it just stays in solution. 
Um, and that's typical. They're freeloaders. Yeah, pretty much freeloaders. They, they came along to get this into solution, right? Because the only way I'm going to get lead into solution is to mix it with some ion that's always soluble. Nitrates are always soluble. So if I want lead ions, if I want to do a reaction and I want lead ions, I have to pick a compound that's soluble. And nitrates are the easiest choice because they're all soluble. That's also good to know if you want to kill somebody, right? If you want to give them a nice dose of chromium-6 over a period of time, right? That's pretty toxic. Chromium nitrate is the way to do it. You didn't hear that from me, by the way. Okay, any other questions on that stuff? That was kind of a little bit of a review of some of the stuff we did last time. Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to switch back to my laptop. So stop the share. Um, let me just see if there was any comments here. Okay, here we go. Can you do an example of a complex stoichiometry problem? Oh, actually it's okay. So is, is that a yes or a no? You want me to do it or you want me not to do it? Can you do it please? All right, I can do a complex stoichiometry problem. Do you have one in mind specifically that you were trying to work on, or do you want me to just make one up? Uh, you can just make one up. <laughs> of course you can just make one up. All right. Um, let me go back to my iPad then. Oh, what's this? Nothing. Sorry, it wants to welcome you to my new iPad every single time. Okay, a complex stoichiometry problem. Um, well, let's start with that expression we just wrote a minute ago, NaHCO3. If you heat it, it produces Na2CO3 plus CO2 plus H2O, okay? So that's, that's a balanced, well, is it balanced? Let's check, is that balanced? Easy question, yes or no? No. It's not balanced, right? There's two sodiums on it. By the way, why are there two sodiums on this side? Why does this have to be a two, whereas over here it was a one? Anyone? Yeah, because it's combined with the carbonate. The carbonate is a minus two ion. The bicarbonate is a minus one ion. So that's why this has to be a two in order for that formula to be correct, okay? So if we're gonna balance it. We've got two sodiums over here. I have to put a two over here to balance that. So I've got two sodiums, two sodiums. I've got two hydrogens. Okay, that's cool, two hydrogens. I've got two carbons. Here's one carbon, here's a second carbon. And I've got two times three, I've got six oxygens. Here's three oxygens, here's two, here's one, six. Boom, okay, that was easy to balance. So two sodium bicarbonates produce one sodium carbonate, one carbon dioxide, and one water, okay? So here's a kind of complicated question that throws a whole bunch of things in there, all right? Um, this, by the way, if you heat this, this is gonna be a gas when this reaction happens, the water's gonna be a gas as well, right? When you bake, you're baking at temperatures well above the boiling point of water. So any, any water that is produced is gonna be water vapor and carbon dioxide is also gonna be a gas. So here's kind of a question I might ask you. Um, if you start with, oh, I don't know, let's pick a number, 32.8 grams of NaHCO3. Now, guys, let me ask you a question. Can this be an excess limiting question? Yes. Well, it could if I had two reactants. How many reactants do I have? Three. Um, One. How many reactants do I have? One. One. No excess limit. This is not an excess limiting question. I only have one reactant. So boom, it, I'm just going to do the math based on that. All right. Now think about this for a minute. 
I'm giving you this amount in grams, and I'm probably going to ask you something about one of these three products, right? That's, that's how it goes, right? Give you something, ask you for something. It's not that complicated, right? Now, think for a minute about the kind of question that could make this complicated involving not only stoichiometry, but also gas laws. So what might I ask you about? Maybe some of these moles. Well, I'm never going to ask you about moles. I don't like asking questions where moles is an answer in the end. But of these three, of these three species over here, which one of these can I throw a couple of topics in? Stoichiometry and gas laws. CO2. Yeah, probably CO2, right? So instead of asking you about grams of CO2, what might I ask you about? Volume. Yeah, I might ask you about volume of CO2. But CO2 is a gas, and the volume of the gas depends on what? Mm -hmm. no, right? The, the volume of the gas is really dependent on a whole bunch of things, right? So you can see how this question could become tricky quickly. So what's the simplest question I can ask you? Instead of worrying about gas laws, what's the easiest question I could ask you about carbon dioxide? Easiest. How many grams is produced? How many grams of carbon dioxide are produced? Absolutely. So let's try that. How many grams? So if you start with this, how many grams of carbon dioxide can be produced? Now, don't start writing down anything. Let me ask you yet another question. How many steps should that take you? Three steps, right? Yes, boom, three steps. Should take you three steps because if you start with grams and you use the balance equation and you go to grams, it's always three steps. And what's the first step gonna be? Uh, mole, convert to moles, right? Yep, change this to moles. So change grams of sodium bicarbonate to moles of NaHCO3, then moles of NaHCO3 to moles of CO2, and then moles of CO2 to, oops, sorry, moles of CO2 to grams of CO2, right? Three steps, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? At least for me it is. You guys are good at this though, because you're answering the questions like experts. So I, I have every confidence that you're going to get this. All right. So why don't you all take a second? If you had a chance to write these numbers down, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to work out the answer. All right. So you guys all got this. Write the balance equation. We're starting with 32.8 grams of sodium bicarb. The question is, how many? Oh, I turned my pen off. How many? Um, why is my pen? Oh, I'm on the eraser. How many grams of CO2? All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and you guys get to work on that. All right, and I'm gonna work on it as well. Don't worry about sig figs, all right? I didn't say that, but for this practice, let's not worry about it.
If you get an answer, type it in the chat and we'll see what people get. I see Cindy has an answer. And Marlo's got an answer. They look like they're the same answer. Typically, that if that's the same answer, that's a good sign. If you're still working, go ahead and keep working. We got we got time. Alrighty, I'm going to share my screen again then. And it's going to say welcome to your new iPad again. And I think I got the same answer as Marlo and Cindy. 8.59 grams of CO2. So you can see over here I just found the oop, no. You can see over here I just found the molar mass of sodium bicarbonate roughly. 84 grams. Yes, what's up, Kay? Um, I just wanted to ask you, where are you that it's January 9th at 9.41 a.m.? Where am I? Yeah, your iPad says that it's 9.41 oh. a.m. on Tuesday, <laughs> January 9th. I don't know. My iPad is, is kaflunked. <laughs> I have no idea. Look at that. You can see my emails from, from one of my faculty. <laughs> Uh, how do I get rid of the email messages on my iPad? <laughs> you can turn off the notifications in the settings. Oh, yeah, that's too complicated for me. Kay, I have no idea why this, this iPad, here, let me explain to you the situation with this iPad. So a couple years ago, the physics department bought a bunch of iPads to use in class. And um, when we went to this remote learning thing, um, a number of us needed iPads. So the physics stockroom just handed me the box. And I don't know if they ever used them or not because all the pens that came with them were totally dead and none of them worked. So I suspect the iPad was never trained to know a location or, or a time. So I don't know where it thinks it is or what time it thinks it is. That's the best answer I can give. Uh, hopefully that, su that suffices. I, I, uh, I, like, I like the date because January 9th is actually my birthday. So there you happy. go. Well, happy birthday, Ramon. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you guys see what we did here? We started with 32.8 grams. We converted that to moles. That first step always comes from the periodic table. Then we changed moles of one thing to moles of something else. That came from the balanced equation. And then we changed that back into grams. That's also from the periodic table. All right. Straight up. They're always gonna be like that. If I give you grams and ask you for grams, it's gonna be three steps just like that. And I'm not, I trust me. If I ask you to find an answer in moles, it's a total mistake and you can call me on it and say, hey, Dr. Hartman, you said you're never gonna ask us to find moles as a final answer. I, don't, I, I won't do that to you because it's never a final answer, right? Moles are always something that we use in the middle to get some other answer, okay? Um, so what about this? Grams of carbon dioxide, that's interesting, but what's more interesting is volume of carbon dioxide. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the next page. So let's say we got 8.59 grams of carbon dioxide, all right? We're really more interested in what volume is that. So let's come up with some conditions that seem legitimate, right? If you're gonna bake, so you might use sodium bicarbonate in baking a loaf of like Irish soda bread if that's your thing, or banana bread or something like that. One of those, those breads typically use uh, baking soda or baking powder, and you might bake those at what temp? Anyone bake in here? Any bakers in the room? Pardon? Yeah. 325? Okay. Let's say 325. That's not, that's not outrageous. But what are the units on that, Nick? Celsius. Uh, Degree, not, not Celsius, no, 325 Celsius, you, you would have a brick, a black brick. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's, 
that would be 325 Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. right? You're likely to bake at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Um, if we wanna calculate the volume of the gas, remember when you're calculating the volume of a gas, just one situation, you're not asking about a change, you have to use the ideal gas law, so PV equals NRT. I wanna know V, that's gonna be NRT over P. Um, so this is the temperature. I can't plug it in there, but it is the temperature. Um, R is a constant, so I'm not worried about that. N, N is the number of moles. I can convert grams of CO2 to moles, so I can plug that in. So what's the only other piece of information I need to make up in order to calculate the volume? It needs to be in Kelvin. Okay, yep, I'm gonna have to make those changes, but there's still one other piece of information that I have to make up. Pressure, Pressure, Pressure. right? So um, typically I'm gonna bake my cake in my oven at sea level, and what's a legitimate atmospheric pressure to use? Anyone wanna take a stab at that? What's a nice, easy atmospheric pressure in, in atmospheres? One atmosphere. Yeah, bam, one atmosphere. Just for fun, if that was in millimeters of mercury, what would it be? 760. Yeah, 760 millimeters of mercury, if it was, okay? So we gotta use this expression, but first we gotta make some conversions, okay? So volume equals N, how many moles is this? So you see how this problem becomes a little more complicated. I can't use grams of CO2. Now I said I'm never gonna ask you to calculate moles as a final answer. It doesn't mean you have, can't calculate moles at some point. So I got grams of CO2, I need to change that to moles of CO2. So I know from the previous problem that one mole of CO2 is 44 grams of CO2. So I can do that math real quick. 8.59 um, divided by 44 is 0.195. Okay, um, so I got moles, R is constant, no problem there. T is temperature, so now I gotta convert Fahrenheit, not to Celsius, but to Kelvin. Oh boy, let's convert it to Celsius first and then convert to Kelvin. So, um, do you remember how to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius? So minus 32 times five pints. So 30, so 32 degrees, 325 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 32. Um, we're going to fewer units, right? Right. There's 180 units in the Fahrenheit scale. There's 100 units in the Celsius. So we got to multiply by five ninths. That's going to equal degrees Celsius. And then we got to add that to 273. Um, who was the person who was anal about the 0.15? I don't remember. So I'm just going to do it that way. So let's see what we get. 325, 325 um, minus 32 equals 293 times 5 divided by 9 is 162. Basically, it's 163, 163 degrees Celsius. So if we'd have set this to 325 degrees Celsius, this would probably be like, I don't know, 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's a little too hot for baking your bread. So 163 plus 273 is 436. 436K. All right, so now we have all the information we need to plug into that expression to see how much uh, gas we're actually going to make. So the volume is going to be equal to the moles, 0.195 moles. R is 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres over mole dot K. Um, T is 436K. And pressure is one ATM. So now let's do that math. 
0.195 times 0 0.08206 times 436 equals 6.97. So this equals 6 point, about 6.98 liters right, of CO2. Seven liters of CO2, okay? Now picture a two liter bottle. Uh, David, what's up? Yeah, I just had one question. Um, where did the, the uh, 0 0.08206 liters come from? That is the value of R, it's a constant. Oh, okay, 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 just making sure. Absolutely. And you don't have to memorize that because the quiz is open notes, open book, open whatever, so you can just look up the, look up the constants. So okay. imagine a two liter bottle Right, this is seven, so about three and a half of those two liter bottles, that's how many, that's how much CO2 you would get at atmospheric conditions and the temperature in your oven. That's a lot of CO2, all right? But, so let me ask you a question though. When you bake, um, do you put 32 grams of sodium bicarbonate in your, uh, in your bread? What do you think? Now, you, you probably put in, you're probably measuring the baking soda, like you might put a tablespoon of baking soda in for like two loaves, right? And that tablespoon of baking soda might weigh 10 or 15 grams, right? So yeah, you're generating a lot of carbon dioxide and that's why your, your baked goods rise, right? If you make yeast bread, the yeast is making um, carbon dioxide and alcohol and that's what causes it to rise as well. Okay. Um, oh my, it's 6.30, so we got to get you guys started on that quiz. Any last minute questions? Okay, yes? Okay, your hands you up. Where can find our quiz? Pardon? Where can you find our quiz? Well, you can't find it anywhere yet, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, I'm going to go into my page, I'm going to turn editing on, and I'm going to make the quiz visible. So here we go. All right. So if you go to the titanium page, I'm going to share my screen here. Hold on one second. Um, back to Zoom. Share my screen. Share my desktop. Okay, so here we are at our Titanium, the course portal page. I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down here. Week 10, keep going to week 10 continued. Here is the quiz right here. So all you got to do is click on that and it should be able to download, which it just did. I downloaded it. So you should be able to download it now. All right. And um, there you have it. So you got the quiz. If you have any issues, just um, talk or message me or text me and I will be here to help you out with that. Okay. You're all quiet. Does that mean you're getting it? Wait, when we finish, we email it to you, right? That is correct. You can email it to me. You can text it to me. Um, those are probably the two easiest ways, email or text. Pr okay. I prefer email because then I have it. I don't have to transfer it from my phone to there. All right. Okay. Are yeah. you guys able to find it? At least somebody tell me you're able to get it. Yes. Yeah, awesome. I love it. yeah. Perfect. Okay, guys, have at it. If you have questions, you can either um, message me privately or message the whole class or send me a text. Hey, Professor. Yep. Yes. Is that a question, Chris? No, I was just saying thank you. Oh, okay. Um, what file type should we email it as? Alec, you can send it as a Word or a PDF. It doesn't really make any difference to me. I should be able to write on either one of those. Can we do the test uh, digitally? Yes, you can do it digitally. So you could write on it. You can just take it as a Word document put your answers in through Word, save it as a Word document and send it back to me. 
Oh, we have to download it and then write on it? Or? Um, no, you don't have to. You can download it and then just write your answers on a piece of paper and send that to me. Take a picture. Okay, so of it. I was thinking of um, digitally writing it separately. because That's down right. Yeah. Of However okay. you want to do, totally, totally down with that. Any form of electronic or picture or whatever. Remember, this is our first time, so I expect there to be glitches. <laughs> 